Hi, this is Rick Duncan with NortheastSports.com. Every so often in the sports world, you come into contact with true class. Over the years, great players finish their career and names fade into the archives. But every decade or so, you see one of these great offspring follow in their dad's footsteps. In football, you have Archie Manning and his boys, Peyton and Eli. In racing, you have the Petties and the Earnhardts. In baseball, you have Ken Griffey and Ken Griffey Jr. In hockey, you had Gordy and Mark Howe. But on the ice, a new era is upon us. From the time Martin Brodeur made the Q Rookie All-Star Team in 1990, then the NHL Rookie All-Star Team in 1994, to his three Stanley Cups and two Olympic gold medals, along with many more achievements than we can mention here, one of his sons would periodically sit in the stands and watch his dad. His name, Jeremy Brodeur, and we had the privilege of sitting down with Jeremy a while back. What we found was a grounded, courteous, polite, and unbelievable young man. Although he grew up with a father of athletic greatness, Jeremy understands that his own success relies not only on his dad's praise, but on his dad's criticism as well. I attribute Jeremy's class act character 100% to his upbringing. Join me now and let's go way back into our NortheastSports.com's archives to a day when Jeremy Brodeur played for the Allen Americans. Jeremy reveals many interesting moments growing up with the greatest goalie in the history of hockey, his father, Martin Brodeur, and we discuss his future goals. Myself personally and NorthEastSports.com is proud to have had the first interview with Jeremy Brodeur after his signing with Allen. Jeremy, I think I'm speaking for every Allen American fan. Good luck in your hockey career, and we will be watching you throughout every moment, no matter where you end up. You and your family, Jeremy, are truly the essence of sports. Hi, this is Rick Duncan with NorthEastSports.com. I'm here with Jeremy Bourdieu of the Allen Americans. How are you doing, Jeremy? Good, how are you? Very good, very good. Good to see you. You too. It's an honor to be able to, to talk to you about some things. I know you have a lot of fans in the area. Um, you had a pretty interesting game last night. Um, six to three it was? Yeah. Yeah. And you stopped, how many? What were you, what? I think it was 28. Was it 28? Yeah. 28 shots. Yeah, I mean it was a, it was a good game. I mean, anytime we score six goals, usually with uh, with I, f I find me and Willie, if we score six goals, you know, hopefully that's good enough to get us a win. And then again, uh, we kept our shot totals down for the other team, which was uh, which was good to see. A little a little different feel, but it was uh, got us a win. So that's all that matters. That's right. That's what counts is the W, right? Yeah. Oh, what uh, I know with you over at the at the goal when. Uh, when the activity broke out over on the bench, did you did you know what had happened or were no, you? No, I, I mean there's just a scrum of people. I couldn't see what happened, and I saw the refs get in the bench, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, a little, a little surprised, but it was pretty funny. And then I, I saw you guys posted some pictures too from right. right behind the bench, so I got a good laugh out of that. Yeah, that was interesting. We had a lot. It we could all we could have made a movie out of it with all the <laughs> the shots, so we had to just pick a few. Um, let's talk about kind of the past. Um, I know a lot of people in the area. Uh, it's really not a valid question to ask you if you come from a hockey family because everybody knows you do um, and, and your background and your, and your dad and, and, um, and your family but um, you were born in New Jersey yeah and grew up there yeah and then uh, when I was 14 I moved away to Minnesota I went to boarding school there for three years <clears throat> all the way up until I went to go play juniors up in Ontario Okay, and then you played in Ontario and then transferred to the Southern, to another league? Yeah, so once I aged out, I started just doing like um, NHL camps after that, and then went to AHL camp, then went to Wichita, and then I uh, did make the team there, and then I went to the Southern League for about a week before that I... was Evan, Evansville. Evansville. Yeah. Um, I guess growing up then, you know, with your, with your father, has, which has gone down as probably the best or one of the best goalies in the history of the game. Growing up in, in a hockey family like that, was there anything that you found different than playing with the, you know, with the kids that, um, you know, that you know, didn't have a mentor like that to, to look up to and, and learn from? I mean, yeah, it's definitely something special to have a, you know, a, I mean, I guess a dad like mine who was a really successful NHL career and all of that, and he always uh, he always has some insight on anything, good or bad, and it's, you know, it's always just little, little things that he can help me with, right. and yeah. 
So as far back as you can remember, did you want to play hockey or was it something that evolved later as a I child? Mean, or? Yeah, I mean, I always grew up, I was always at the games all the time, you know, playing mini sticks in the family lounge and stuff. So like, I, I mean, I started, I was a forward and then I scored like one goal my my own first year of travel hockey, so I said, okay, I'll put on the pads instead. <laughs> I remember reading about that. that. That didn't work real well for you then. Did your, um, I noticed um, in a lot of uh, interviews and, and, and things I read about your, your father, he, uh, he's as proud as, as he can be of, of you know, you and, and, and your, you have one brother. I have a or two brothers. Three. Oh, you have three brothers? Yeah. Okay. And, and do they all play hockey? Uh, yeah, my, my twin brother plays club hockey in Providence, and my older brother plays at the University of Ottawa. Okay, so he's in And Canada. then I have a little brother who's eight. He's eight? Yeah, and, he and he's, he's, uh, he, he's playing hockey, and, and when I went to go visit him, we had a little break right before Christmas, and uh, he put on the pads for his game. He was playing goalie in front of me. It was pretty fun. That's pretty cool to watch your little brother, isn't it? Well, and your dad, um, like I say, reading about um, how proud he is, especially of watching you, it seems like, he gets nervous. Um, I was reading uh, one article about when you were playing his team, <laughs> and he, you know, he said he. I think he said he wanted the score to be zero to zero because he he didn't want to pick. <laughs> do, does do you feel that puts more pressure on you, or do you feel kind of at peace with, you know, I mean, with with your dad watching? I mean, I know with certain things with my father growing up, we were in the classic car business, and you know, I always wanted him to know that I did well, but you know. Is, is there any more or less pressure with, with you know, having him no, watch I think, your game? No, I think it's pretty even. I mean, both my parents, they both like to try to watch the games. I think my mom gets a little more nervous than my dad. Usually that's she's a, she's a pretty hard person to sit next to if she's actually at the game. But I bet. <laughs> but no, there's no, I don't think there's any added pressure. I mean, to me, it's just my dad. It's not someone who's, well, obviously he is a great hockey player and stuff, but it's not right. how, like, I see him. You know, he's my father, so it's right. it's, it's normal, I guess. So I guess what a lot of I've noticed a lot of fans in the area that that um, that follow the Americans and follow you. I mean, everyone is very impressed with your play. You know, I mean, you've you've done very well here. And I think one question that that I seem to to get out there is, does growing up, how much? I mean, I know your dad being uh, a professional hockey player. You know, he he it was very time consuming for him. But how much time did he, was he really able to spend, you know, helping, you know, mold you into, you know, what you were looking to become as far as um, in your career? Yeah, I mean, obviously he's, like, even now, like, he's still pretty busy. Like, he works with, uh, with the St. Louis Blues in, in, their, in their front office. And, I mean, I mean, just after every game, you know, I, I give both my parents a call after every game just to chat, them, chat with them about, you know, how their day went, how my day went. And, obviously, they watch the game, too, so I get some insight and then just kind of build on that from every day, I suppose. Well, now, as far as coming to Allen then, when you first, how did you actually hear about, was it a phone call, or was, how, how did you hear about that you were coming to the to Yeah, the it, was a, it was a phone call from my agent, I guess, because I guess uh, Riley got injured, so they needed a, right. a goalie for the weekend coming up. And then you were down here pretty quick, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, I left, uh, so I, I got the phone call. I was supposed to play my first game in Evansville. <clears throat> I was supposed to play my first game in Evansville, and then we got the call the night before, <clears throat> so then I, I couldn't, uh, obviously they didn't want me to play that game, so I just backed up. It was a school day game, and then I left the day after. I drove to St. Louis, stayed at my dad's house for a day, just to split the drive up a little bit, then I drove from St. Louis right to here. Kind of in your younger years, did you play um, uh, in, in a lot of leagues, or was it more or less just you know for fun and, and doing it that way? <clears throat> I mean, I always played hockey. It was just fun for me growing up. And then I played like just like a band and beat, like a, a lower level of travel hockey. And then I actually played in a tournament in Quebec called the Pee Wee Quebec Tournament, which is like a kind of big tournament where you play in a, the big Colisee in uh, Quebec City. And then after that, like that was a pretty uh, eye-opening experience. There was like uh, some top-notch players from well, from when I was little, obviously. And right. then and then. I uh, played my first year of AAA hockey after that, and I played AAA Bantams, I think. And then after that, I decided to move to Minnesota, where my brother was going to school, at a school called Shattuck St. Mary's. Mm -hmm. And it was a boarding school that's uh, centered around hockey, and it has uh, like you know some good players like Sidney Crosby and Zach Parisi and McKinnon all went there, and Taves, and 
Jack Johnson and stuff like that. So it was uh, just being there was pretty cool. And then even when I was there, I didn't really make the best team growing up. I made the worst team my first year, and then I didn't make the Triple A team my second year. And then my third year, I finally made a I made the the top team there, and we uh, ended up winning the national championship. And we had some pretty good players too. It was pretty fun. We had a a friend, uh, one of my really good friends, uh, Clayton Keller. He's playing in Arizona now, so he's uh, so yeah. We had some good players there, and then we had a lot of a lot of guys playing Division One and juniors and stuff. So it was after that it was pretty fun. And then after that year, I decided to move on to Ontario. And that's when you went to the OHL, the OHL yeah. then, and that is 16 to 20. Yeah, uh, and I old. went there when I was 18. Oh, okay, yeah. so when you was 18 then. Has there ever been a time that hockey was a grind for you, or is your passion such that you've, you've never really, um, I mean, you know, a lot of people sometimes get into it to where they, they feel it's, you know, it's, it's more of a grind than, than fun. Have you always had fun with the game? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I always try to keep like a really loose personality throughout the games, you know, I try, even in the locker room, I try to stay pretty loose and not too serious. And uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's times where it's, it's hard, you know, like there's, you're not winning games and sometimes like your confidence is low and it's mm -hmm. just, it's hard. But I mean, I think I had a, my second year in junior after my first year, we won the Memorial Cup and then we had 14 rookies the next year. So we had a tough squad and we were just hoping to make the playoffs. That was like our our goal so after that I mean that was pretty fun like we know we knew we weren't a great team like the best team in our in our league but it was fun uh, just you know trying to grind out and get wins because every win felt so much more fun after that so that was a uh, that was a fun year what um over the years as a kid is there any unique story with you growing up that you can remember with hockey that um I mean as far as is your family, whether it was your brothers or your dad, that um, that you like the fans to know about? Something that would um, that you could tell us? Yeah, actually, I have a, one I remember really well because it was probably one of the most embarrassing moments <laughs> I've encountered. It was uh, so I was at one of my dad's games. I was probably about I don't know eight years old. I'm not sure, but so we have like seats in the family section and then we had a couple extra tickets that were right behind the net so we could sit right behind my dad mm -hmm. and it was like probably two rows up and i think it was like john madden scored a hat trick and everyone was throwing hats on the ice and every chair had like these inflatable uh inflatable things that were all packaged up like really thin mm -hmm. and i people were throwing hats in the ice and stuff and i wanted to throw something on the ice so i was <laughs> I was trying to toss a little little thing that came that came with the the seat right before the game, and I was trying to throw it on the ice. And I was like kind of tossed out by the glass and trying to get the goal, but I kept coming back down and kept doing it. And then my dad came out of his end, like hit the glass pretty hard, telling me to stop. Oh no! <laughs> and all the fans looked at me, and it was it was pretty embarrassing. Yeah, that would have been. And how old were you? Yeah, it's a good story. I don't know. I must have been eight. Okay. Seven. Okay. So you were. Not really old enough to know better, but you know, young enough to where he could still get on you pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a good one. That is. So then you grew up in uh, in New Jersey, um, went to school in New Jersey then? Yeah. What part? Of New uh, Jersey? North Jersey. So it's, uh, it's uh, in an area called uh, Short Hills. Short Hills. So it's like 15, 20 minutes out of Newark. Okay. So you're not too far north then? No. From, from the city then? Yeah. And, and uh, given... Given the time that, I guess then, it would, well, the, the the New Jersey Devils where your your dad played, mm -hmm. then you were pretty close to the, you never got, did you ever get to travel to any of his away games at all? I mean, you, yeah. You guys I mean, in 2000, there? I mean, we went to, uh, went to, da we actually came to Dallas for when they, they won here when I was really little, oh, and then okay. even went to Colorado the year after that, and then Anaheim in 2003. Then for like some couple All Star games like in uh, in Minnesota, I remember the most. And then obviously like he uh, <clears throat> he played in the Olympics and too. So we went to Torino in Italy. That was pretty fun. And That's then cool. we were also in Salt Lake. Yeah, yeah, I remember me and my brothers we dyed our hair like red, white, and right. <laughs> and then uh, Vancouver too, which was the last one. That was a pretty fun trip. I was a little older okay, for that right. one, so that was a that was a lot cooler for me. I remember it a little more. So there's really not a time in your life you don't remember hockey being, being yeah. a part of it. Yeah. And, and really not a time, I guess, that you never had the passion for the game mm -hmm. that, um, that, w that developed inside of you. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always, 
I've always loved hockey. I enjoy it every day still. And uh, like even like growing up, like we always had like we'd always play ball hockey in our basement. We play like we put me and my brother in that, and then me and the other one would go and try to score on him. And we we play for hours at a time. And so we'd, put, you... we'd make holes in the walls with the sticks oh, and God. everything. And <laughs> did, that, did, did that get you in trouble? Or... Yeah, did it sometimes. <laughs> so there was some competitive nature between between oh, yeah. you, you, you guys. Is there still that when you guys are all together? Do you still get a little competitive with any other games, or is there? Kinda... Uh, lately, it's been more like ping pong <laughs> <laughs> nowadays because we can't really play mini sticks too much anymore. Yeah, but... that's true. That's true. What um, I guess, given a lot of the a lot of things I've read about. Uh, goalies, and I don't know if this stands true with 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 all or or many. Um, one one player made a remark about your dad one time about how it's not about the statistics. M Martin Brodeur knows and does stop the puck when he needs to, you know. So he said, you know, statistics are out the door because you know it's it's his instinctive way in nature um, as a player that he just does it, you know, when when the timing. And, and when the timing's right and he needs to do it, do you, and with that being said, do you follow statistics? <clears throat> uh, I mean, I know what you do. I mean, every player does, I know. But do you worry about them that much, or do you kind of just let it, let it flow more? Or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, sometimes for me, I find it's easier to set goals with statistics. Like, honestly, like when I came into like I just wanted to make sure I had over an, like a 90, 900 save percentage. That was like right. my goal. Okay. And then from there, I mean, after that, it's just like, I just, you want to win games, obviously. Because if you're, I mean, even if your statistics aren't great, like if you're winning games, that's that's what matters the most, right? right? So, I mean, yeah, I find there's obviously times where like, you might not have played well, but you make a very timely save in like a, a, a part of the game where the tide's going to turn. To, for the worst, so you know right. sometimes it's it's more about that than your statistics and whatnot. What do you draw now? I'm, I'm, as far as after a game, you say you you call your your mom and dad, yeah, um, pretty much. And do you is there anything? And I'm sure it, it is, but I think a lot of fans would like to know. Do you still draw a lot of advice from your from your father? I mean, at the level because you know you are moving up in in the leagues. Is there? Is there anything in particular you search for from him at this point in your career that helps? Uh, not, not in, like uh, nothing specifically. I mean, after games, they're like, like he'll, he'll tell me I played good. He'll tell me if I played bad. Like it's not. Uh, he's not always just like tell me oh good job and so stuff. So he will be honest with you. Then. Yeah, yeah, he'll always be honest with me, and uh, I appreciate that too. Yes. I, I think I, I can take criticism decently well, and then I always want to learn. You know, if I have a bad game, like. Uh, for, for me, it's like I don't, I don't like, <laughs> I don't like losing or anything. I don't really sleep too well at night, and then I end up well, rewatching our whole game over and uh, see if there's any uh, little things I can spot out that I need to kind of touch up and stuff. And he helps me out with that as well. That's good. That's good. What? Um, so, I'm sure everybody knows what your ultimate goal is. But what would you? If, if what can you tell us about where would you like to be in in four to five years? Or, two to three years in, in the hockey world? Uh, I mean, every day I'm just looking to like improve my game, and then if I can keep doing that, hopefully I can just kind of work my way up. You know, I think that's a, another thing that's not help, helped me, but like I guess benefited me a little bit was when I got cut from Wichita. I started in, uh, in the Southern League with Evansville, and it was kind of like, eye-opening for me because I thought I had a, a good junior year before I thought I'd get like more of an opportunity and I, I didn't and then uh, you know I, that's why when I got called up here I, I really appreciate being here so I guess it, that's a it's kind of motivated me a little more to you know try to get better every single day rather than just kind of going through the motions just progress daily and yeah and, and and that that's the way you almost have to take it daily sometimes you start looking too far ahead uh, you can mess yourself up with with goals, definitely. Mm -hmm. If if there's um, some kids out there in, uh, that that are just like you said, playing in their basement, playing around, and they have the same dreams that you've had, what would be what kind of advice would you give to them to to follow their dreams? Uh, my advice would be probably to uh, 
I think uh, just you know make sure you're keeping it fun as long like even if you're you want to be serious about hockey I mean playing other sports you know being an athlete is just as big a part of being a hockey player I find and uh, I think that's the most important thing is being able to be an athlete and, and, and just make sure you keep up with other sports and find time for it even though if hockey's your main priority you can find time to do other things when you're younger especially and then obviously when it's gonna get more serious when you get a little older in high school and uh, college and after that then it's then you can focus a little more on hockey but for when you're young I guess keep it fun and keep other sports and keep all like uh, your hand eye and stuff you know the, like golf, like for example, like I play golf and ho like uh, you know, I like to play ping pong, golf, uh, even like bowling and stuff, right, like just little right. things like that. It's just to stay competitive in other sports, I suppose. Keeps keeps you fresh. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, I think uh, given given your background and you know there had to be certain outside factors, you know, because you uh, given given your dad's stature and 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 how great he was. But knowing you and, and seeing you around here, you're so grounded and you seem so at peace with, with what you're doing. Where do you get that from? Uh, I mean, it's just, it's just, I feel like it's just how I've always been, you know? I mean, watching, watching my dad play growing up, he always seemed like he was having fun playing. And he, he's always like a kind of a loose personality as well in the locker room. And then, right. I mean, when it's his time to be serious and he needs to focus up, he's, he can turn that on whenever he needs to as well. And, you know, I mean, my, my older brother is also, you know, pretty laid back. And, you know, I always grew up looking up to him. He was always on the, the team above me, like, uh, like in like minor hockey. So I'd always watch his games. And then in high school too, because we went to the same high school, he was always on the prep team. So I'd always watch his games. and. Uh, She's, I guess, pretty inspired from that. So you you guys all seem to have a, a group gathering wherein everyone everyone follows each other and, and you've got a, a tight-knit family there. Yeah. Well, one of the um, fans um, wanted me to mention to you that they are very impressed and uh, with, with when uh, Gary came back and what you guys do on the ice there at the end, they wanted me to mention to you how um, they were glad that that you were expressing your faith, and and I wanted to let you know that as well. Um, uh, sorry. No, yeah, thank you. I mean, I mean, I've never really done that after games or anything, but I saw Gary there in the middle, and then uh, you know, they're pretty nice to join him. You know, I didn't. I mean, obviously, I've never had like seen that before at their games, and it caught me by surprise a little bit. But uh, I think it's a pretty cool thing. Yeah, it is, and and I think a lot of um, a lot of the fan base they don't see that anymore and it, it really has I've noticed we get we're getting a lot of responses from people that are saying that that is you know very impressive and and they do they they uh, they and and us we tip we tip our, your, our hats to you because it's it, it's something you don't see a lot anymore if if um, you could tell the the public the fans anything that May they may not know about you that you'd like them to know. I mean, hobbies. Is there something else you do besides, uh, you know, hockey that you, just to pass your time? Uh, yeah. I mean, even in my, my family, my family were really competitive in golf. So like in the summers, like I always play with my brothers, and I always try, I try to be. I never beat him because my my older brother is really good. But like I'm more competitive with my, with my dad than my brother <laughs> in golf, and he, he gets to play a lot more often, so he's got the edge on me now. But. But for for me, like I just like little like arcade games, not arcade, but like just like a, uh, you know, like darts, ping pong, like yeah. shuffleboard, all those little things, like kind of the conventional stuff. Yeah, right? that's yeah. for and for some reason I'm like pretty good at all the, all those little things. Yeah. I don't, I'm not just, like all the little things that don't really matter too much. Like, <laughs> well, it's not like you're not you're not athletic. You yeah, know? So I know, on. but you know, if I go home for Christmas, I'll play like best of seven ping pong with my brother and stuff like that. And it's I don't know, it's fun. Would you care to tell us your um, handicap or? Yeah, I'm but I'm like a four handicap. You're four. Wow. Yeah. What's your brother? Yeah, he's like a plus two. Really? Yeah. So he he shoots under par most of the time, and if I put it the the ball to ten feet, he puts it to three. So it's a little degrading, a little bit, but it's yeah. it's fun to watch. So you play your dad. So you do take advantage of the yeah, age me, factor yeah, there. Yeah. Me and my dad are about even. So it's. So you guys are about a four handicap. Yeah, four or five. That's so so that that goes to show you that it it. One sport can bleed into another as far as you know athletic ability and and, mm -hmm. and being uh, 
you know, like you mentioned before, you know, follow follow every sport. Yeah. You know, as as far as you're, you're if you're if you're into hockey, you know, still follow other sports, and and you'll uh, seem to better yourself in, in other ways. Do you find that playing golf and getting better at that helps your intellect, your hockey intellect? per se, or is there, any, I mean, because golf is a mental sport. Yeah, too. golf I find is more of a mental sport, and I find that's why it, it suits me and my brother as well, because, I mean, a lot of people get really mad, and then it'll be in their head for, like, four or five holes or something. Yeah. But, like, for me, it's just, it's fun, you know, so. So that that would probably be a fun place to, to follow the family on the golf course <laughs> yeah. for a round then, right? That would be yeah. a good one. Well, Jeremy, uh, we appreciate your time. This has been a, uh, we, it's an honor that we've been able to interview you, and we appreciate it very much. Oh, thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Thank you very much. This has been Rick Duncan and Jeremy Brodeur with the Allen Americans. Thanks for joining us.